Alright, hello everybody, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Trevor Hickey, I'm a foreign semester student, and today I'm going to talk about reptiles in the media. Um, so a little about me, um, stay in the corner, John. So this is, uh, for the last five years in Florida, I did reptile educational talks for kids, and for a lot of adults too, who didn't have a good idea of reptiles, at a show called Repticon, so kind of like Comic Con, but for reptiles. Um, I'm sure you've seen this cat around campus and on a bunch of cards. It's my cat waffles. Um, these are uh, <laughs> a drawing of the snake that I did, so I'm an artist on the side. Um, this was my first big boa constrictor. These are my first uh, baby Jackson chameleons that I had born, not hatched. Um, some, some chameleons are egg layers, some are fly fur. So this um, Susie had 15 baby chameleons uh, when I came home one day. Uh, this is Clementine, my leopard gecko. Uh, this was actually my first ball python um, breed session with snakes, and I had twins come out of the same eggs, so that was really exciting. Um, seven babies out of six eggs. And this is my, what started all, my bearded dragons. Um, that was Titan and his baby. Uh, he had no idea it was up there, or he would have eaten it. So, um, so it started. So, um, aphidophobia is a natural fear of snakes. It's a, a simple fear of snakes. A lot of people have it, and a lot of people don't know why they have it, but it's just a natural fear. So it dates back to a time in evolution when mammals had to fight reptiles for their food. They had to live, they had to breed, they had to survive um, with natural predators like that. Um, so Arnie Ullman was a professor who did some research with flowers, mushrooms, snakes, and spiders. So what he did is he put up um, different slides for, they had a select group of people that would sit down with clickers. One to, um, to select when they found snakes or, or anything that caused them fear, and another clicker that they um, they selected when they saw something that was nice, like flowers or mushrooms. And the reaction time is what proved their the fear. So the, the second something came up with a snake or a spider or something that scared them, they clicked it really easily, but it took them a little bit longer to, to click in when they saw mushrooms and flowers or something friendly. So the results is that basically that we are pretty predisposed to, to fear without having any prior tra traumatic experiences or anything like that. So what can we do for people who are already afraid of snakes? Is there anybody afraid of snakes? Any afraid of reptiles? Not that comfortable around them? Yeah. Okay, good. But if you are, um, and I'm sure you know people that are, uh, let's get started. So starting out young, um, early exposure, and this is me actually, this is me <laughs> as uh, Jack Hanna, and um, for a Halloween uh, costume thing that we did at a, uh, at a first, first grade school, that's my my red tail blaze in his shark costume. So I had my little shark lizard there. Um, I couldn't find the picture, but I had teenage mutant ninja tortoises that came um, and, uh, and a couple other ones. And, uh, and this is you know, one, of the, one of the reptile shows. Um, teaching this little man how to, how to hold a big snake. Um, and just kind of getting them started young, but I put in there the repetition. Repetition is key. So a lot of people have held a big snake when they're young, and then by the time they grow up, they're like, ah, oh, not again. I don't remember that, I was young and dumb, and I don't want to do that again. So repetition is, is key. Um, I just threw that in there for a little bit. Oh, why are these laser? They're not there. Just touch the screen and you're good. What's that? Touch the screen and you're good. Touch the screen? Yeah. So, know your simple differences. So I'm going to put these two up first. Anybody want to tell me which one is which? Anybody identify these things? What are the options? <laughs> <laughs> so these are two very, very um, misinterpreted snakes. There's, there is a water snake, a simple banded water snake, and there's a cotton mouth, there's a water mouth snake. And we'll tell the difference of these two. Which one's which? Cotton mouth is on the left. Very good. So a cotton mouth is on the left. It's hard to really see with these pictures, and I kind of ran out of room, but the cotton mouth has a very, very wide jaw. So very venomous, highly dangerous snake. Um, often aggressive, one of the more aggressive dangerous snakes when there's not a lot of, most uh, dangerous snakes and venomous snakes are more fearful and they have warning strikes and they're not actually going to get you. This one has been gotten a couple times going after people, but the banded water snake on the right, completely harmless. They even have, they, their worst is a slight anticoagulant in their, in their spit, so they can in your blood a tiny little bit, but it's nothing that's gonna ever hurt you, you never feel it. Um, I haven't been that before. Anyways, um, so these two, very simple, but if you haven't seen the differences before, alligator versus crocodile. You know which one's which. Yes. Okay. Yep, on the 
else is the alligator, and a lot of it has to do with that bite. So the overbite, um, you always see in alligators, and you see over and underbite in crocodiles. There's a lot more differences, a lot in the scales, a lot in the head shape, um, but that's a lot more detail than I'll get into for this little one. But um, does anybody know why I put up a rattlesnake and a corn snake in here? Let me guess. So rattlesnakes rattle their tail. That's a given. Um, corn snakes also rattle their tail. So a rattlesnake that could kill you with a very small amount of venom versus the corn snake that couldn't really do anything to you. Um, this is something that a lot of snakes are killed because they hear the rattle. Now a, a small snake like this, and I've seen it when I feed baby snakes in, in Tupperware, they rattle their tail, they try and act all big and bad, but they're, they're harmless. They can't do anything. As babies, they can't even open their mouth big enough to actually bite you. Um, but they do rattle their tail to invoke fear in, in the predator, kind of give that idea that they're a lot more dangerous than they are. I got three other ones here. We all, we've all seen these. We all know red and yellow, kill a fellow, red and black, run and jack. Um, but we have actually two different types of red and black snakes. Anybody know? Well, I kind of just told you, but which one is the, uh, is the venomous snake? You guys need to see how you want to. The middle one, yeah. So the middle one is your coral snake. Anybody know what this guy is up here? Yep, this is a scarlet king snake. And this one is actually just called a scarlet snake. It's not technically a king snake, it's just a scarlet snake, scarlet king snake. There's also OKT corn snakes that look exactly like that as well. It's a little bit different in shape. Um, so, turtle versus tortoises. This one, unfortunately, a lot of people still will take a tortoise and toss them in the water to help them get to where they want to go and they can't swim. So, um, so there's four main differences for them their habitat. Obviously, turtles are more aquatic, um, and tortoises are land tortoises, but also tortoises you won't really find them in a tropical climate. Find some, you find over tortoises, and there's some other ones, but um, inchbacks, but most of them are, are desert tortoises. The aquatic turtles are the ones that you're going to see, and oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, their legs and feet, another one. You see, you always see spurs and really thick, stumpy legs for tortoises, and they're, that's for digging and for getting around the rough terrain. Um, your turtles are going to have more of your aquatic and webbed feet. So, their diet. Um, typically, aquatic turtles are, are carnivorous and um, or omnivorous. They do eat both. Um, your tortoises are mostly mostly vegetarian, but they, they do know to eat um, some drugs if they get their hands on some. And their shell. Um, your turtles are going to be very sleek, smooth shell. However, there are there's always exceptions. Your alligator snapping turtles have the very large pyramiding on their shells, kind of like this guy who's called pyramiding on their skews. Um, anybody know what the top and bottom of the tortoise and turtle shells are called? I'm sorry? Carapace. Yes, carapace is on the top, and you know what the bottom is? Plastron. Yes. So your plastron is on the bottom, your carapace is on the top. So it's, I put that on there, but I want to make sure that I point that out. Um, so what about this guy? You know what this is? This is, an, uh, this is actually an ornate box turtle. So the ornate box turtle that has the stumpy legs that doesn't care to go into the water too much. So like I said, there's always going to be these differences. And that brings to birds and chickens. So a friend of mine pointed out that all chickens are birds, not all birds are chickens. So all tortoises and tur or I should say all tortoises are turtles, but not all, all turtles are tortoises. So there, there are differences, but there's also a lot of similarities in them. Um, so poison birds venom, another one that we always hear. Um, I like saying this to kids when they ask me at the reptile shows. I'm not sure if their parents really appreciate it, but uh, if you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. It, it bites you when you die, it's venomous. So um, poison and venom is almost 99% the delivery method. So um, if it's injected into you, injected into the bloodstream, it was, it's, it's venomous. You can eat something, if you were to eat this poison dart frog, it's poisonous and it would affect you that way. Um, and this question I always get, well, what if you drink the venom? Well, you, you make the world a little smarter. Um, so you don't want to drink venom. Um, most of the time, it's not going to have an effect on your system, but there's always that chance. It's completely not worth the risk, unfortunately. Too many people do. It just gives reptiles a bad name. But um, so to get on, on with, the, um, with reptiles in the media, ignoring ignorance. So um, this one I actually found as I was going through and looking for um, for examples for this. This is the first one that I had. Um, the uh, it's the use of adjectives 
is significant when it comes to portraying reptiles in the media. And it, it, it ruins their, their look. So this one, I, I like this one. The reptiles lurk in our backyard golf courses and national parks. These reptiles are lurking around, they're so awful. But what they should have put is how you know we destroyed their land and they're trying to find somewhere to be, and now we're just making people afraid of them. So crocodiles attack pets, a completely avoidable situation, completely avoidable. Um, most of the time, there's, there's signs up to say there are alligators in this water. And if there's not, if you're in a tropical climate, just take that as a possible possibility. Don't let your animals near the water. It's a lot safer than not do it. Another one is <laughs> from the daily, uh, daily.co.uk, that halfway news station. Um, so again, snakes on a plane horrified passengers leap out of their seats after a poisonous, they didn't come to this spot, um, snake <laughs> slithers out of an overhead locker and dangles from them, dangles from them during a flight. So this was actually, it looked like from the video it was a green viper, but there was no specialist that actually didn't identify the snake. Green viper, yes, would have been a venomous snake, a poisonous one, and it would have been a, quite a dangerous situation. Um, however, they didn't actually spe uh, specify it, so it could have just been a green rat snake or, or any kind of other small green snake that are completely harmless. Um, but it makes for such a better story. Oh my gosh, there was a giant venomous poisonous snake on this plane, and everybody freaked out. So it's just kind of ignorant. And like I said with the um, with the pets, we got to remember what um, what we've done. So the destruction of wildlife is always taking into consideration where are these deer gonna go? Where are all the birds gonna go? What about all the squirrels? And what about all the gophers and any other kind of, of furry mammal? But we forget the reptiles are there too, and reptiles are everywhere. And they're completely 100 percent effective just as bad as the mammals are. So YouTube videos, and I'm, <laughs> I try to not watch them, but I see them all the time. Um, this one was had gone viral. This man, I'm not quite sure where it was, but he's Snacking these cobras, and people are like, Oh my god, this guy's so crazy, he's awesome. Look how fearless he is. But he's abusing these animals and he's smacking the heck out of them. And for for what? For for more likes on YouTube. I'm not really sure what it was for. Um, and this one right here, this really bothered me. This was a, obviously some of these pets, it's an albino hognose snake. Um, it's actually a rear fang snake, rear fang kind of snake, which is kind of interesting. Their venom is more, not more potent than much of the we've seen, but their rear fangs, their fangs are way in the back of the nostrils. But you know, Kind of really chew on you to get the bang into you, and then it's, it's harmless. So these are actually completely safe and kept as pets. The other rear fangs I know are the Asian vine snake and the false water cobra, I believe. But, anyways, um, this snake is eating itself, and it, it's, this happens. It's a, it's a natural thing, it can happen, it happens on accident. Um, but instead of immediately trying to help the snake, which is obviously going to die if it keeps going like this. Unless it regurgitates itself really fast, its stomach kind of passes and then starts to start eating away its own body. And instead of helping it out, they sat and took a video and laughed about how cool it was, how dumb snake, but this poor thing is killing itself and the owners aren't doing anything about it. So little things like that can be just don't feed into it. And um, so teaching an old dog new tricks and not let it affect you. It's some simple, you can Google research. Um, enormous boa, and other some more adjectives, um, on the loose in Lake. Patacom, as in uh, uh, New Jersey. But another one, snake, 20 foot long snake terrorizes New Jersey Lake. So it, it does say boa, which is nice. They put a boa constrictor in there. In the article, it mentions this giant python. Um, but boas, they don't reach 20 feet. This particular snake, the Columbia red tail boa, would reach 80 10, and that's like enormous for the boa. So it obviously wasn't a 20 foot long snake. It's not terrorizing the lake. A big body snake like this is probably drowning or <laughs> desperately trying to find some land if it's in the water. So it's just so, the, the nonsense is there. It's, it's up to us as future professionals to really be able to see that and, and kind of help inform clients if you do want to do it in daily practice and we'll let them know some of the stuff that needs to be avoided. This one, have everybody seen We Bought a Zoo? Everybody seen that movie? So <laughs> the snakes came in this movie in a giant crate. So nobody throws hundreds of snakes into a crate and just locks it. And poisonous again, and it's marked on the crate. So um, <laughs> part of the movie, I put this little link in there. It's not working. It's it's just something another unnecessary act of violence towards reptiles, where the kid kicks the snake at the very end and has it in the bucket. He's like, oh god, he kicks it. And and people have that during the movie, but that's again, that's if that was a puppy or a kitten, it's incredible the different reactions that they would get from it. But these 
things all have feelings and they all have that all can experience pain. So these snakes, um, I can guarantee you they're not a single poisonous, poisonous or venomous snake in here. So like I said, we've got ball pythons. This is a coastal carp uh, python. We have another snake here, orange snake there, like an albino pine there, albino milk, a whole bunch of little garbage snakes, just sort of a scary effect of these, all these crazy dangerous snakes that are all at your local pet store that are available because they're harmless pet snakes. Um, so get it together, Matt Damon. Um, and you too, Samuel Jackson. So um, I, I did really like this editing that they did for putting it on TV. But again, here's a corn snake in the background and another snake right there. Completely harmless snakes that are used to invoke this crazy fear that we don't need to have. And uh, yeah. And Voldemort is marketing team. So this is just something. This is <laughs> clearly I'm getting nitpicky, but this is clearly a reticulated python, and those are scales of the Burmese python. So I just want to put that in there. I was in, I was in adventure and saw that, and I was like, yeah, it's a Burmese. I'm pretty sure there's a retic in the movie. But anyway, um, so destroying discrimination. Um, what's okay to do with reptiles is not be okay with mammals. I pointed this out earlier. Everybody remember this? Seeing this go through on Facebook, the woman was. Um, Convicted for animal cruelty, didn't actually do jail time, but convicted for animal cruelty. However, this number, and I go over this a lot, I went over this a lot in the, um, in the reptile shows that I did back in the States. This is a uh, uh, thing of a diamond back of a snake with his mouth sewed shut. His fangs have been ripped out, and his mouth has been sewn shut, so he's no longer dangerous to the public. And this is done in the reptile, or uh, rattlesnake roundup in, I believe, Texas and Oklahoma, I think, still do it. Um, so, holding a lot of uh, live rattlesnake with his mouth sewn shut and fangs ripped out. So, how could something like this, sorry for the graphic nature of these pictures, how is something like this promoted? It's, it's truly disturbing and it really frustrates me that imagine the kind of outrage if this was a dog or a cat, that they're ripping his teeth out and sewing his mouth shut just so you can get the thrill of taking a picture with it. It's, it's, this is as defined animal abuse as it can possibly get. Um, I can go on and on about how much that really bothers me, but um, I'm, I'm hoping you guys can see this and be like, what, how is this possibly going on? Uh, really frustrating, but, and some more pure nonsense. We're gonna do a little lighter note, but um, eating alive, everybody watch that? Hope not. <laughs> I did just for the sake of Putting, putting more of this into, into the uh, presentation. So they got this green anaconda in the wild and they got the guy to smell like rodents and then he went out there in this big armored suit and the snake wrapped him up and they, it started to, to constrict him and he said, oh, my arm. So they stopped it and pulled the snake off and were eaten alive. Discovery Channel. You, you want them to be the leader in avoiding nonsense like this, but we know all kind of TV is going that way. Um, the biggest thing that really frustrates me about this What's going to happen to the snake? If the snake goes through with it and swallows it, I honestly don't think anybody that was in the production team would have actually thought about it. That snake, if that snake swallows that guy, how would they get him out? They either have to kill it, hope that it regurgitates it, both of which would kill the snake, um, or tries to pass it, but it can't pass it. It's not going to pass something like that. They got to split it. It's not going to. So that snake is almost guaranteed to die, and they're going to do this for entertainment purposes. And it's, I just can't grasp why it's okay. Um, and it's, it's more nonsense. The Photoshop skills are incredible. Uh, that's a toy truck. Um, there's nothing absolutely near that big. It's a Titanic ball, maybe, but it's not out here now. And this actually went around. I was really shocked. This is the worst Photoshop skill that I've seen in a while. And I do a lot of stupid stuff with my cat on Photoshop, but this is bad. <laughs> this is a really bad. Um, but people actually fed into that. Oh my Oh, look at the size of this snake. It could eat all the only people at once. It may even have to be that big. I didn't look. Um, and again, be smart. I pointed this out earlier about the signs. There are alligator swimming. This is an absolute tragedy that happened in Florida. If you guys aren't familiar with it, I'm sure most of you are. Baby would be eaten by an alligator. They said the baby would hung me a foot into the water. Um, it's such a completely avoidable disaster. Uh, it's got to feel terrible for the parents. It feels obviously terrible for the baby. But they were. it was late at night. There were signs all over the place. Alligators in the water. Don't approach the water. It, it's, it sucks. It's really awful that, that these obvious warnings are not taken seriously. 
Um, these aren't animals, these aren't their homes, and we built our stuff around it, and we've taken away their, their food sources for the most part, and these things will happen. Um, and again, just signs are so simple. The simplest tool to avoid that disaster is those two. Um, and promote positivity. There are good reptiles out there. There are good reptiles in the media, and I love all these guys, and I love when you see like a good reptile, positive influence in the rep and, and reptiles brought on to, to kids and put in the media. Um, and just for, for fun, I do say I, I actually saved a lot by threatening to go to Geico. Also, <laughs> and so, um, so promote that positivity. Um, be, be happy about your reptiles and promote that to your, to your future clients, even if you don't actually work with them. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.